Welcome to EFT Nation, your home for all things tapping. For show notes and resources, please visit EFTTappingTraining.com. We are your tapping hosts. I'm Alina Frank. And I'm Craig Wiener. The information provided in this podcast is not a substitute for counseling or medical advice. The information presented here is meant to inspire and educate listeners, but are not guarantees of any kind. Alrighty, so you know this this we're gonna talk about polyvagal, polyvagal theory. And when I think about asking you, Craig, would you share a few thoughts on polyvagal is like asking, hey, could you give me two sentences that would talk about like the colonization of the Americas? You know, like this is like a big, heavy duty, brain hurting theory uh, for some of us. And I know that you're really good. One of your many talents is to make things more understandable. So, well, thank you. Yes. So here's the invitation. We're going to talk about polyvagal in one episode of EFT Nation. <laughs> and, and specifically how, you know, why, why is that Relates such a EFT? buzzword with yeah. EFTers? Yeah. yeah. So I, I'll be the first one to say that when I first encountered it, it was just as overwhelming as it is for you. Right. <laughs> Especially because at that time, the only source was a tome by the developer, uh, Stephen mm-hmm. Port, Dr. Stephen Porges, <clears throat> that was very, very, um, it, was, it was rough reading. And it was very uh, scientific, very rigid, uh, the research and the theory. And it wasn't um, written in a very um, understandable way for the mm-hmm. layperson. Right. And so fortunately since then, it really, there are many different, um, his work has come out in an abbreviated form. Mm-hmm. Uh, clinician Deb Dana has done a fabulous job of really, because uh, Dr. Porges isn't a clinician himself; right. he's a he's a researcher and physician. Anyway, um, and uh, PhD rather, and so the work has become much more relatable and understandable. Great. Great. And so, when we start to look at what polyvagal theory is, what is it? Um, it really comes down to the science of feeling safe. Okay. That's really what it comes down to. And, um, you know, it's just uh, teaching it about it. We have a tapping out a trauma course. And one of the students was just really getting it. It kind of came down to um, their understanding of their relationship and understanding of the nervous system and um, the ways we used to think about it and are starting to think about it again. And um, certainly the research and development of polyvagal theory from an anatomical and physiological standpoint is still being understood, synthesized, researched, etc. just like EFT. Um, polyvagal theory focuses on what's happening in the body and in the nervous system, and it helps to explain how our sense of safety or danger or threat um, can impact our health, our behaviors, our attitudes, our emotional states. Um, And so why it so relates to EFT is how our body interprets and behaves cues of safety and cues of danger. Okay. Right? So in EFT, we're always working with that. It's, you know, why am I so anxious? Right. Why am I not able to act in a certain situation? Right. Why do I feel fear when there's not necessarily something to fear? Why do... So, you know, many of the ways and, and the ways we act in the world and feel in the world are affected by how we're perceiving our circumstances. So, um, okay. When we look at how the system is working well or not well, it helps us to understand, for example, how we are at ease or able to easily connect with others mm-hmm. or not connect mm-hmm. with others, how it is to feel safe because when we feel safe we are more imaginative we are more creative Um, we feel more at home in our own bodies Um, we feel more resilient and able to handle um, different difficult circumstances and all the things that we're dealing with eft yeah yeah and we teach that we before we had something like polyvagal to explain Mm -hmm. it there were other ways (laughs) that we would explain it um Right, being safely working safely within the window of tolerance and and all of those things as trauma informed right. practitioners and trainers, um, and I hope you're going to get to at some point like like what does polyvagal actually mean? 
Is that like a segue that you're ready to transition <laughs> no, to? No, no, I just yeah, it's a of part course, of it. Yeah. Of course, I'm going to say <laughs> okay. what it is. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So this theory is based on our anatomy and especially the evolution of the nervous system over time. Okay. So poly, so let's go ahead and break down the term. Poly means many, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Vagal refers to the vagus nerve. Okay. Which is the primary parasympathetic part of our nervous system, right? And the theory and is... Run, why does it run? Okay, so uh, you know what? Better if I just go ahead and go with this here. Okay. Yeah, because that'll make it smoother and easier to understand. So let's talk about it this way. That most people, when they think of the nervous system, they think of, okay, there's the voluntary part of your nervous system, the part that makes you run and walk and blink and move your arm. And then there's the unconscious part of our nervous system, right? Mm -hmm. the, what's called the autonomic nervous system or yes, the automatic, automatic nervous system, right? Yep. And that part that's acting mostly unconsciously all the time mm -hmm. has always been thought of working kind of right, left, black, white, yin, yang as sympathetic mm -hmm. nervous system and parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So most people would think of our that unconscious part of our nurse, nervous system in a binary way, you know, A or B way. That it's right? on or off? No, or that, that there's that there's two different parts. Okay, yes. Okay. There's black or white, there's right, there's this nervous system, the sympathetic that makes you fight or flee. Most people know that. Yes. And then they think then there's this other part. Right. Okay. Freeze and otherwise and the parasympathetic part. But what it's really come to be understood is that that parasympathetic has two parts so it's divided in half okay okay so it's poly so okay the poly starts to revert to okay the parasympathetic has a what's called a ventral and a dorsal half we'll just say okay and what that means is that this part this vagus nerve right that's a cranial nerve that travels throughout our body in mm -hmm. fact vagus means the wanderer okay. it wanders throughout our nervous system that takes information from our body and brings it up to our brain mm -hmm. and it also takes brain information from our brain to our body okay right and, yes okay and so this vagus nerve has two different parts one's the dorsal and one's the vagus so we actually have this three part autonomic nervous system Mm -hmm. If you think out of this, three different ways that they function. Mm -hmm. Okay. This developed over time evolutionarily in a way to respond to threat and survival. Okay. That makes right? sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. So far, so good. So far, so good. Okay. So when we start to look at that, what we'll call the dorsal. So if the, one of the terms that's often used is the autonomic ladder. So think of a ladder as having many different rungs. Mm-hmm. But think of it in thirds. And the bottom third, the one closest to the earth, will think mm -hmm. of it as this dorsal vagus. And this is that like reptilian response. The older the, part. The oldest say, part. Yes. Right. right. And this oldest part responds to threat and danger by shutting down. Yeah. Okay. More nuanced, but we'll call it a freeze type response. Okay. Okay, many people in the EFT world have learned that, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's what happens when things start shutting down, when things start slowing down, mm -hmm. and they can even move all the way down to shutting down, kind of like a possum goes right. into that state. Right. Right? Okay, playing possum. As we move up now, this bottom third, right, which is part of the parasympathetic, the dorsal vagus part, is that part that has everything from, because it's a big scale, from kind of being unconscious on a, on, a, on a or moving into a free state or a dissociated state or a low energy state or a checked out state could be a very depressed state, a lack of energy state, a very low energy state mm -hmm. energetically. Mm -hmm. Okay. As we work up the ladder, mm -hmm. okay, the next third is what we call that sympathetic response of which we all know fight or flight is a part of. It's a mobilizing third. It's one that takes energy to help us in a state of danger. It helps us to run away or to fight off or to get things moving and get out of that very low energy state. So it has a mobilizing yang like energy. Okay. So if we have the resources in a dangerous traumatic situation, 
and I don't just freeze in place like a deer in the headlights, and I have the wherewithal and the abilities and the resources to mobilize and fight or flee, that is how I escape that situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the upper third of that ladder is what we'll call the ventral vagal state. Okay. And this is the state really that has us move toward feeling safe, mm -hmm. toward being able to connect with others, what's mm -hmm. often called the social engagement state, mm -hmm. in which I can start to now relate to others. I can stat now feel safe enough to be able to connect with others and be with others and be in different situations. And we're all trying to move our way up that ladder to spend more and more of our time in a ventral vagal state. Okay. In that parasympathetic state that nurtures us, that rebuilds, that feels safe with other human beings. Okay. Okay. Right. So those are the thirds. And would we say that this corresponds with uh, like a movement away from like hunter gatherer to being more in community? Like the, the hunter gatherer there... is was oh, community. Yeah, too. yeah. But I mean, so I, I, in terms of evolution, do you have like does it does it correspond with some era in our evolution or is this just no it would, have... it would correspond with moving from reptilian toward human being got it, got evolutionarily it. got it okay? yeah yeah because to be able to socially connect with others requires um different ways that we do that and, and we'll talk more okay. about that all right so um what else i want to say is other two other important elements one is this physiological development of these parts of the nervous system over millennia. Right. Okay. So that's one important tenet of the polyvagal theory. The second one is the idea of neuroception, right? And neuroception really is um, perception um, below awareness. So this is, think of um, when you walk in a room, how are you determining whether it feels safe or not safe? So these are all, this is your neurology's way, your nervous system's way of interpreting, of getting information in a particular situation and interpreting whether it's safe or dangerous or a real threat. Yeah. Okay. And we've so, talked about like that sometimes it could be off because of your past traumatic history. Well, let's say, because I don't want to use the word off, it is perceiving it is dangerous. When it's not. When it may not be physically dangerous, but yes. it feels physically dangerous. Got it. Yeah, got it. Right? Yeah. So your neuroception of your determination of the information given, right? As that amygdala is, and your eyes are seeing, your nose is smelling, your mm -hmm. ears are hearing, all this information that's coming in. Right. And your amygdala is now a big player in that antenna of safe versus danger, which is now connecting with your hippocampus, Right. right? And that is now trying to tell you, oh, you know what? The last time that somebody walked in that was bald and had, you know, tattoos mm -hmm. and whatever, you were harmed. So this time means that as well. Yes. And exactly. now your body all of a sudden is making that relationship based on your past. Without your conscious awareness. Oh, my God. It's happening so yeah. much faster than oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. And now it's sending signals to your body. Yep. Your body's now tightening up, feeling nauseous, whatever it is it's feeling, which now you're also through what's called enteroception, analyzing and determining below the level of awareness what that means. Oh, Clearly, yeah. that means danger as well when my body feels that way. Right. Hair is, you know, the hair on my skin is, et cetera. All of that is happening. Yep. So we have the concept of neuroception. That's another part of polyvagal theory. And the third part is the importance of the interhuman nature of what we call co-regulation mm, okay okay and you know a lot of these things just make so much sense when you think about them so mm -hmm. for example when we're doing any sort of therapeutic work and you know especially in an eft session when somebody is dealing with especially through the body feelings of dealing with the past traumatic experience right and they're maybe getting hijacked emotionally their nervous system is starting to move into a state that they don't feel safe they're revisiting that past event and as the practitioner you are holding a state of safety mm -hmm. you are holding and facilitating a space in which they can move from being dysregulated being you know pulled into that trauma to then kind of leaning into your energy your feedback your um your cues of safety your groundedness your groundedness yeah that you're emitting through your tone of voice, Got the prosody of voice, the yeah. pace of voice and yeah. volume and all of that, that kind of lilting, seesawing quality as opposed to a monotone yep. 
pitch can become involved, pacing can become involved, the muscles um, around your larynx, which affect your tone of voice, mm -hmm. the way your face is showing up, mm -hmm. the ways your eyes are looking. So, you know, polyvagal theory regarding co-regulation is really very much the the transmitting of information and the receiving of information through a lot of the upper face and upper body and tone of voice and all of those things and also the way that we hear as well all of that is affected and can be um, hijacked but as a person that's being the eft practitioner our mindful awareness and skills right with not getting hijacked ourselves shows through right our eyes and face and voice right. and all of those things so so these three pieces um, are key. There, there's so much more than that. Um, but these are some of the key elements of what the theory includes and then becomes practices of a knowledge. So when somebody says, you know, you have a polyvagally informed approach, like a trauma informed approach, mm -hmm. it's the awareness of what's happening. It's the understanding for why somebody is having a problem being able to connect with other. Right. It's being skillful in slowly working up that autonomic ladder that somebody isn't going to move from a dissociated or very depressed state suddenly into a well state that they're going to need to have some energy moving through to move through that second set of rungs through getting energy mobilized you know so if somebody go you know i'm making an extreme example somebody incredibly depressed and can't get out of bed yeah. to say be happy okay yeah. i know that's silly but it's like you're not going to be able to do that until the energy starts moving and walking and gaining energy and moving feelings and moving to be able physically and so we're trying to encourage them to work up the ladder right. to move from that dorsal vagal uh, lack of energy state to a more mobilized sympathetic state because sympathetic nervous system isn't just fight or flight it it, it has movement happen right. it, has, it has a tension and tone that's part of that mobilizing of energy. And could you say that EFT helps as a mobilizing energy? It absolutely can, okay. as well as other things. Right. right. Right? So, you know, when we're looking towards how are we in that ideal state most of our lives, how do we move or if we get set back mm -hmm. from being in, you know, think of a ventral state as, you know, your ideal home state in which you're calm and regulated, you can access energy, you mm -hmm. can access quiet, um, you're not getting triggered in a variety of situations, mm -hmm. um, you don't easily move into defensiveness or shutdown right. or aggressive behavior. Right. So we're trying, you know, I think with EFT and of course all kinds of practices to be in that home ventral vagal state as much of the time as necessary and as little as often or understand you know as little as often i want to say going down the ladder but i also don't want to have a judgment about that because we are the way we are for a reason right and the way that we have adapted to the circumstances that have happened to us mm -hmm. um we have done the best we can with the resources we had to find a strategy to survive those right and we've all had different resources attachment issues non-issues you right. know parents that were there for us that taught us things and were patient with us and loving with us or not and so you know our survival mechanisms are key and we have to really acknowledge that but working towards being more ventral vagal state and moving into states in which we can play and laugh and connect with others um without fear etc all of those things is kind of the work we're doing with eft i think yeah, I, I think this explains a lot about how um, we've said it. I mean, through s years and years of, of, of teaching this stuff and trauma, we've said it in different ways that it that the importance of having a skilled, safe, trauma-informed practitioner help us when we are working through a traumatic event. And, and now I, this gives another reason why the importance of that um it explains co-regulation 
and how we can absolutely use easy EFT for regulating ourselves in the mm-hmm. moment. Right. But to go deep dive into processing trauma. Yeah, we can't co-regulate ourselves. Yes. It requires another yes. human being. Yeah. That, you know, that, um, that it's a necessary requirement to, that co-regulation happens between beings. And I'm not saying that when I become dysregulated, I can't use tools like EFT to re-regulate myself. However, yes. especially when it comes to significant trauma, right? I can't be, lo- you know, tossed out of the boat into the storm and hold the boat still, right? At the same time to climb back in. Yep. Gotcha. And so that's where that that other, yeah, that presence, that grounded presence, to be able to facilitate and hold that safety, so that I can move out of the storm and back into the boat. Mm-hmm. Then start to breathe and get my bearings and then figure out what's next. Yeah. So, yeah, right. that's, that's that's a good way to put it. Excellent. Well, Okay, thank you. so did we actually kind of yeah. give you the essence of thank polyvagal you. in a way that, so it's polyvagal theory, uh, Dr. Stephen Porges. Um, he's actually the developer of the Traumatic Stress Research Consortium and the Polyvagal Institute, professor of psychiatry at UNC, University of North Carolina. And, um, you know, there's a lot of videos of him. We have some on our site as well. And, um, yeah, there's just a lot of growing resources. And another plug to Deb Dana for a lot of the therapeutic work she's doing and exercises um, that are polyvagal-informed exercises. So, you know, we'll we'll give some of the resources down below here. But um, thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope that was helpful. Thanks for joining us today at EFT Nation. And remember that you can find show notes and previous episodes at EFTTappingTraining.com.